So here's a, a practice uh, in preparation for a middle term. So the first question say, I give you a gym bank. Uh, so <coughs> well, the first question, you basically have to go to NCBI database first. And then it says the N M zero zero A two two zero dot five. Well, then you will see there. There is a one record for gene. And uh, click that one. Nucleotide. Yeah, it, this should be a nucleotide database. There. Uh, <coughs> oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe we should go to a nucleotide database. Sorry. Uh, NCBI nucleotide. Okay. Search again. There. So, do you see my screen? Okay. So, well, this is says. Mass musculus hemoglobin beta adult T chain. And then I go back to the question. The question say, this gene is it from which species? Well, I mean, you probably need to go uh, to at least know a little bit of uh, Google if you know. This is basically a mouse. Mass muscular is basically a mouse. So oh, yeah. is that? Uh, okay, and then the next question is how many exons does this gene have? Uh, so, Dr. Chen, the species name would be found right there. Oh, it, says, it does say that. Right, it does it say organism, mass muscular. Okay. Oh, on the top it says house mouse, house so mouse. there, so that's quite obvious. Mm -hmm. And next question asks how many exons this gene has. You can actually scroll okay. down, you see. Uh, a category of fields of features. There, underneath our feature, you see gene from first nucleotide to 646. Those are the gene. And then at the bottom, you see exon. That's the first exon. The first exon 1 to 164. And scroll down. Coding sequence study 55 to 495. That's but the first exon is already there. That's because part of the exon has a translation uh, info, uh, regulatory information there. Five prime UTR. Five Can prime. Count that one, even though I'm going to start yes, that's part. That's the first exon. Okay. Right. And then you scroll down, scroll down. You see. Uh, wait a minute. Where is the second exon? Right. There. Second exon. One forty-seven to three nine three sixty-nine. They should be, yeah, the last exon, 370 to 630. So there are three exons in this one. Yeah, so, okay, the next question. Uh, uh, <coughs> this question uh, say, I give you three sequences, uh, and then you are asked to uh, <coughs> answering the question 3 to 10 based on those sequences. Now the sequence uh, is actually pretty long. As long as you select all of this, it's going to select everything. So you highlight those and then go to uh, edit, copy, go back to uh, open up your APE. And then go to edit, paste. There, all the gene uh, uh, sequence will be pasted there. So this will be, uh, so I'm going to save this as uh, my wild type. This is, oops, sorry. Uh, save as wild type. I'm going to save in my download folder. Okay. <coughs> uh, if you don't do this, you can go to the the sequence also provided to you uh, in the 
a zip file. So if you go to the look at the zip sequence just underneath of this link. There are practical questions. Do you do you see my screen here? Excellent. So there's a say gene RNA is mutant source file in zip format. So that's and then on top of the article that's for the next question. So okay. <coughs> but the sequence is also provided inside, but for the inside one, within the question you have to copy paste that. If you uh, use the zip file link, you have to unzip everything and then uh, open the file. Okay, that's my wild type. And with that sequence, I now I can answer some of the questions. So first question is ask what species this gene is. So how should I do this question? Yeah, we, how do I know which organism this sequence is from? Very good, yeah. Uh, yes. You you say the magic word, blast. Yes. So we go back to Google and see BI blast. And since oh uh, okay. Since this is the DNA sequence, I'm going to nucleotide blast. I just paste everything there and blast it. Uh, Okay, well, this is pretty fast, you come back. So, you look at this 100% cover, total score, the p-value is zero, identity, identical, 100% identical, so that's it, that's the sequence actually we give you. And if you look at this, it's called Saccharomyces cerevisiae CS2AAC acting related protein. Uh, you can click on that, it actually <coughs> excuse me, give you a link, a GenBank link, click on that, a link that gives you more information. If you already not clear to you, if it's not clear, you can actually look more. There are organisms, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, S2AAC, that's the strain. So that's there, that's the sequence uh, we, for this question. So this will be Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that's budding yeast. The second question say, the sequence is called CDS, that's the coding sequence. So go back to APE, I just go to operating frame and translate this. Uh, let me just use one letter there. So th I got the very good translation, there's no stop codon in between, and 449 amino acid. And there you can answer the uh, question four. Question five: Giving a pair of PCR primer forward alpha, reverse beta. Uh, what's the expected uh, PCR fragment? So I'm going to first copy the forward sequences, and then I go back to APE. Go to edit, find, find out the forward sequences. Uh, it's highlighted uh, somewhere here. Now close the find, go to feature, new feature. This will be alpha. And make, make sure you know which one is this forward and backward. This, uh, is it reverse complement or not? This one is not, it's forward. Uh, Double check that CTG CTG GGCT GGCT right. So double check, make sure that is actually forward in the sense direction. And then I found out that the reverse sequences. <coughs> Go back to APE. Oh, I haven't copy paste the sequence. Sorry. Yeah. Edit uh, copy and then go back to APE. Edit find and then paste this one find next this time you look at agc gat this this time is it's now in the reverse complement strand so go to a feature new feature this time it's beta reverse complement make sure you pick that one <coughs> there 
That's my uh, Spellman blue for the forward and green for the reverse complement. How do we find out the the, uh, the size of this one? There are several ways. You can you can look at the map. You can look at the graphical map. Uh, this is not circular, so this is linear. The you see the alpha from 139, 139 to 558. Beta is 12. 24 to 1225 so there you can calculate how long the uh, product is on your own or you can actually select the sequences there I select all the sequences and how long is this the I select how long is the length 686 it actually tells you that if you not sure you can copy that sequences and put in a new sequences there, 686. That's the yes. Why did you say that it's linear and not circular? Mm. This is the coding. Se this is not plasmid sequence. Mm. This is coding sequence. Okay, so yeah. we, we don't make. This is a linear oh, okay. sequence. Yeah. Besides, it's a PCR product. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's a linear. But when product. I click the graphic map, it doesn't really give me. Oh, I see. So, well, 686, so it actually gave you the choice. <coughs> the next question say, if if I want to cut this PCR product amplified by primer alpha and beta with restricting enzyme PAC1, how many fragments will be produced? Well, there, I already have the PCR product there. Uh, I'm going to go to enzyme, select, and look for PAC1. Well, Tag one, it actually cut twice. Well, I have a PCR fragment cut twice. How many fragments should I see? You can click digest. It should give you three bands, right? Uh, in fact, one is uh, about three thirty-five, another one is three thirty, three hundred, and this one fifty-one. So this should give you three bands. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a line, you cut it uh, twice. You should see three fragments. So, okay, and then the question say, the next question is that mutation in mutant 1 is what? Is what kind of mutation? So, well, so I don't need the PCR fragment anymore. So, I just, this time I need to go back, find out that the, put the mutation 1 into APE. So, again, I'm going to highlight the, the mutant 1 sequences. Go to edit and copy. Go back to APE, say file, new file. And now I'm going to paste the mutant one sequences. And save it. <coughs> there, that's my mutant one sequences. And how do I find out the mutation? Uh, let's first do alignment. Put the wild type at the top, mutant at the bottom. Uh, maybe I put it there. Oh, there. That's there the mutation is. So the mut that's the 1100. This is about uh, 8. So 1000 and 82 there is a single nucleotide change from wild type T to mutant G. So 1082 is a nucleotide change. Uh, if you look at the, the choice 1082 M to I G to T. G to T is not right, right? It's actually T to G. So that's actually uh, give you a wrong answer. Make sure you don't pick that bait. <laughs> okay, it was it's supposed to be wild type position mutant, right? Right, yeah. So there's no right answer here. No, you haven't figured out the correct answer yet. Oh, right, because you need to write it in the Yeah. So Plus next uh, we're going to translate uh, the mutant uh under the wild type. Well okay. translate this is the wild type. Make sure you know which one is oh this is the mutant, sorry. I, I just translate the mutant sequence. And then go back to wild type. If you 
not sure which window, go to window. <coughs> this is my wild type. And then translate the whole thing again. Alright, this is my wild type. And then uh, highlight all the wild type sequences. Uh, copy. And then which uh, program should I look for now? Excellent, class door. Yeah, class door W2. Let's just use a <coughs> to, to put to align the sequence on class door. You need to know how to do the put a sequence in faster format. So, greater than sign, wild type. Make sure you switch to a new line when you copy paste the sequences. The sequence cannot start from the after great time sign, otherwise you will lose information. And then I'm going to put okay, mutant one and go back to APE, go to window, find out the mutant one translation. There. Gene mutant one CDS sequence translation. And then I highlight make sure you highlight everything. Don't miss a sequence. Other, don't miss something, otherwise your position won't be correct. And make sure you switch to a new line, paste everything. Now uh, we have everything in the correct format. Click submit. This shouldn't take very long. Maybe a while. Uh, we are very patient to waiting for this. Oh, I guess it take a while. Well, consider you are using a server at the United Kingdom, uh, England. It's pretty fast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh huh. Oh. You can you can actually calculate on your own if you don't want to do. Oh, there we have it. Oh, it look like I still missed one there. See. When I, when I copy the second mutant, I miss the first uh, amino acid. So the sequence won't be... I have to make sure I, I'm not reading the wrong position. Yeah. So... Well, there. So let's look for the mutation. Ah, where do we see the mutation? Remember that the nucleotide is 1000 something. So it's around... Should be around 360 something. There, I if you look carefully, here, that's where the mutation is. Wild type is M, mutant is R. What's the position? The last two lines started at 360, so this is a 361. And the wild type is M, mutant is R, so this is M361R. That's the mutation. Like Go back to uh, where is my Moodle? Right. Oh, there. So mutation N three six one R. That's the mutation of this one. Okay. Then the next question: the mutation in mutant two is what kind of mutation? And um, well, the same drill again. I'm going to uh, copy. Make sure you highlight everything. This step you have to highlight everything. Otherwise. Uh, the sequence will be correct. Right. So, going to APE new file. Okay, paste. And this is a mutant two. Uh, you can you can save as APE. That's fine. Yeah. Right. This is a mutant two, and I'm going to align wild type with mutant two. Wild type on top, mutant two at the bottom. Mutant two at the bottom.
Why do I do that first? Why don't we do the translation and see what happens? So there, so I see a mutation around uh, 12, oh, uh, 13, uh, 9, 8. So this is about 1207, 30, uh, 31, 32, 33. Uh, oh, maybe, sorry, maybe it should be 60. Let me see. Is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sorry, 63. 1263. So, I'm copying the wild type A, and the bottom is the G, so it's A1263G in the nuclear sequences. Not seem to be correct, but I'm not sure whether how, how it affects amino acid. So, I'm going to translate everything again oh I see why you did that right because it might not it might be a silent mutation so this is a mutant uh, two uh, copy everything and then I go to the AP, uh, class door again but this time uh, you can try to input a whole new thing or uh, you can just start uh, the mutant tool again at the bottom uh, paste everything and then I submit them again and um, if you are not sure what sequence are there you should start the whole thing make sure you copy paste the wild type mutant tool there but here I because I'm doing this a lot so I know I'm, uh, what's there. So wild type mutant two, mutant two in the in second line. Uh, maybe I should remove the mutant one. But the point is, you don't see anything different between wild type and mutant two. Right. So go back to <coughs> your uh, practical the the question the Google, uh, model again. So. Number two is correct. There's nothing changing in the amino acid uh, level. Okay. The last number nine says which restriction enzyme can be used to distinguish the wild type gene from mutant number two? Right. So you go back to the uh, APE, look at the alignment. So the wild type at the top, uh, mutant at the bottom. So we need to find an enzyme can distinguish from wild type to mutant and you just pick a sequence uh, 10 on the left and 10 on the right and so I'm going to pick 10 on the left and 10 on the right select that go to a uh, uh, copy and then which side should I go to now excellent Nap cutter. There, a E D cutter, and <coughs> make sure you put wild type there, so you can. Depending on how the question going to ask you, you may need that information. Okay, so this is wild type, and then I go back to A P E, find out the mutant one. Do exact select exactly the same region. And uh, well, I may want to keep the wild type window there, so I'm going to start a new window on map cutter. That way, I can compare the two windows more more uh, easily. So this is mutant two. Okay, and that's wild type. That's mutant two. Uh, oh. Uh, well, y which enzyme this so CBIK one? This enzyme cannot be used. They are they cut both wild type and mutant, so that's not good. But you look at the wild type. There is the E. coli one, APO one, MLC one. They cut wild type but not mutant. So any of that three enzyme can be used. So MLC C one, E. coli one, APO one. 
any of the three can be used to distinguish wild type from mutant. Yes. Um, I remember you saying that it needs to be around the mutation, but not uh -huh. exactly on, on it. How do you know at which what point? No, it has to be around mutation. It, has it to doesn't. Be around right, right, yeah. Okay. If it's not around mutation, you are not distinguish anything, right? Okay, but it's. Yeah. It has to be exactly at that point in the sequence, or it can be any of the enzymes shown in this little piece. Since I all do of not this is technically around the mutation, right? You have to double check the enzyme. Look at the enzyme. See, where is the mutation? The mutation is right here in the middle, GAA. That's your wild type. In your mutant, it changed to GAG. That A changed to G, destroy the E. coli 1 site. The E. coli 1 site is GAATTC in the wild type. You click on equal R1, it actually highlights the site for you. Go back to the mutant, there's no GAATTC. That A, that change from A to G, basically eliminated the equal R1 site. That's, so equal R1, or if you click MLC1 or APO1, they all recognize the, the same pattern. Okay. So any of that three enzyme is correct. And go back to that one, you, you will see E. coli 1 is the only choice provided to you. Right. Of course, this is not a tricky question. If we give, provide all three enzymes, you should pick all three. But okay. that's, I think in the exam, we only gave you one correct choice. So, so it's just a little easier. Okay, the last question. So, <coughs> again, this is uh, there are a similar exercise in uh, YouTube. Uh, Basically, we give you four primers, and then we ask which pri which pair of primer can be used to amplify a PCR fragment which covers the mutation in mutant one. So the again, we go back to APE and identify where those primer on the sequences, and then we also need to know where that mutation in mutant one. Well, the mutant one we already did it. The mutant one is something at the 1082 uh, position. So <coughs> so we need just need to uh, find out uh, the primer first. So I do not need mutant 2 anymore. The question is about mutant 1, right? So close. That's wild type. Well, I don't need uh, the previous uh, features, previous primer, so clear all the uh, previous primers, that's the wild type, mutant 1. Well, double check, let's see where that uh, mutation is. Align the two sequences. Align the wild type, compare the mutant there. Aha, yes. Mutation is around 1082. Now I go back to the wild type. It doesn't matter either wild type or mutant. Uh, because you are going to find out a primer anyway. So, okay. So go back to the. Let's start with the first uh, primer. Highlight all everything. Copy. Go back to APE. Edit. Find. Paste. There. Uh, you need to really make sure you know what which side the primer on, either in the sense direction or in the reverse complementary direction. This one is in the uh, right, uh, in the forward direction, in the sense direction. So close this. Go to a feature. New feature. Uh, this is Charlie, primer Charlie. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, go back to the question again, look for primer delta, uh, highlight all the sequences, copy, go back to APE, edit, find. Uh, it doesn't matter, wild type or mutant, okay. the question, they should amplify both of them. Okay. <coughs> So this one, okay, this one is on a reverse complementary uh, strand. So this is delta, make sure you click the reverse complement strand. 
Okay. Now primer elephant. Uh, highlight everything. Go back to APE and again find on this primer. Uh, DC. Oh, this one is also on the reverse complement strand. Go to a feature, new feature, and this is primer elephant on the reverse complement strand. Okay, the last one. Uh, again, copy paste. <coughs> Fine. Paste. Uh, Oh, is this one also on the reverse complement stream? T T T. Yeah, it also seems to be on the reverse complement stream. Uh, feature, new feature, elephant falcon. Okay, so we just need to <coughs> now uh, go to the map. Actually, you don't need a map. You can look at uh, the sequence. Uh, you are comfortable reading that. You can do that. Okay, so those are the primer: Charlie, Belter, Falcon, Elephant. So, well, this one is 882. So we know the mutation is 11. Mutation is here. So clearly, you know the mutation is uh, is here. The primer only amplifies within the arrow. So delta. Falcon with Charlie, they cannot amplify the mutation. Only elephant and Charlie will, this pair will elef uh, will amplify the mutation. You, you, you click the circular map? No. The linear one? This is li it doesn't matter for this case. But okay, the, but yeah. where, how do we highlight the mutation? Uh, you can actually also generate a, a that's a good point. Uh, the mutation, uh, you can also, uh, the mu Go to uh, select and uh, edit, select and find. So the mutation is 1182? 1182. 1182, I get it. So you edit Make sure that's the case. Uh, 1182 to edit. No, uh, 1082, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, although that won't change the answer. but. So like I can find again, uh, 1082 to 1082. Okay, and then go to a feature, new feature. It's 1082, 10, mutation one. Uh, since I want to make it pretty clear, I'm going to make it 25. And uh, I'm going to change the color to something Oh, maybe I should have changed color. This is uh, very slow right now. Okay, I'm going to change it to red. Okay, okay. So now, look at the, the enzyme map again, graphic map. Oh, maybe I changed it too big. Anyhow, that's the mutation is. Uh, yeah, so you see the only the uh, elephant and Charlie will cover the mutation region. Falcon and Delta will go amplify the region outside the, uh, will, will, will not cover the mutation. And okay. go back to IP, you're going to see that Charlie and Elephant. Other other pair will, will not work. Yeah. Okay, so the next question. Ah, the next question, <coughs> uh, 11 and 12 are all uh, based on R and R Studio based. The first question basically a uh, template R code provided to you. Uh, in fact, it's linked here. You can copy paste. You click on that. It goes to <coughs> uh, online source code basically. So you can highlight this line, highlight this line, highlight those code, copy, and then just open up R Studio.
this may uh, I have too many windows open so it's a bit slower at the, at the moment maybe I should close my APE now so. exit all APE no say All right. Uh, then I'm going to go to file, new file, R script, and paste everything there. So that's the template code. And go back to the question again. Uh, the question say, well, I gave you this protein standard, uh, 180, 60, 40, uh, and those are the OD5595 reading. And and then I ask you to oh, sorry. Uh, evaluate this code. Uh, based on this code, uh, do a, a standard curve and evaluate the R squared value. The R squared value basically is to evaluate how how good uh, a fitting is, a line is. And there is a Wikipedia information to explain what R squared value is. But the question asks you using the data provided in the table uh, found out what's the multiple R squared value of the standard curve based on linear fitting in R so all you have to do is uh, put the data into oh my god I just closed uh, my question uh, sorry let me open again uh, uh, Ten thirty. Uh, there will be another class at one. Okay, <coughs> so uh, I'm going to put uh, the sequence at the lower bottom so I can see it, and then go back to R and put the si put the information there. The first one is a hundred, and the reading is one point oh five. So change that. The second one is 80, and the OD is 0.79. The third one is 60, uh, 0.44. I may align them so make it uh, look more clearly. Third one is 60, and the reading is uh, 0 0.24. Oh, I missed the point. Uh, a common mistake when people are typing, they forgot to put a comma there, and then they will, the code won't run. 40 at 0.24. The next one is 20, put a comma there. 20 and 0.19, comma there. The last one is, is the concentration is 0, but it still get 0.04 reading. So there, that's my standard curve data. Uh, compared to the table again, I make sure that's, uh, that's what uh, we have. So I'm going to assume that's correct and then just highlight it on the wrong. And this question actually, uh, no, it looks like I must input something wrong. Uh, I got R square value of 0.83. That seems to be, uh, let me look at, oh, see, I put it wrong. I have 260.05 80 yeah so I I should remove this one right so okay run it again right the R square multiple R square value is at the bottom 0 0.9403 so I they actually pick the close at 0 0.94 there so right. there. The question asks you for multiple R square value. So. Okay, the second question. Uh, a template R code is provided to you in agro uh, standard code template. This again, <coughs> uh, you can copy paste this code again. So this is the template R code. So 
copy page go back to APE new file again right, that's the template and the question say now I have a DNA uh, size letter and their distance 250 base pair 10.7 now you have to look at because everything has to be in the same uh, same scale. The the size ladder in the template is in KB. So basically two point two fifty means it's point two five. Right. So I'm going to change that two point five, seven point seven, uh, five point nine is point five. Point seven five is uh five point zero. Wait. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. One is uh four point two. Uh, one point five is three point one, comma, comma, <coughs> two is two point five comma 2.5 KB is 1.9 3.0 KB is 1.5 okay uh, double check make sure that is correct I'm going to go ahead and run this code and <coughs> well the question then says the unknown sample have two bands, one is 6.5 uh, centimeter, the other way is uh, 2.9, 2.7, sorry, and then ask you to predict the size of it. So one is 6.5 for unknown, the other one, oh, I should have said unknown OD, that should be unknown distance, sorry. Uh, I should go back and change the time, it should be unknown distance unknown uh, because those are all templates from the uh, concentration one so I don't change it but uh, unknown uh, unknown size that should be Okay, so unknown distance. Oh, unknown size is n. Yeah, that's that's a problem when I'm doing this uh, on the fly. There must be some typo here. Oh, I'm missing an n. Sorry, missing an n. Unknown. Unknown size is unknown. Oh, this is unknown distance. Unknown. Uh, I'm missing an N again. Uh, sorry. Apparently, I'm not very good uh, spell <laughs> on the fly. Okay. I know. And size of the unknown. Now, because the 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 tricky part of this one is the unknown size is the log part. So you have to do a ten to the uh, do the 10 to something power to find out there, so Wait, I I'm sorry, I just with everything that you changed, I'm not understanding so concentration is size another yeah. concentration should be unknown size uh, yeah, because the, the template is based on the protein standard curve, so I, I just renamed the variable, okay. it and doesn't matter yeah. OD should be unknown yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to otherwise it doesn't make sense, uh, but it doesn't actually affect uh, the final result. All, all you need is just uh, okay. The when is basically when is four hundred base pair. The other one point eight two. Okay, that's it. And you should uh, now. Wait, where do you put the two 